Unless, of course, thou shouldst take the crown. Elden Ring has problems. I want to begin by saying that I will do my best to keep this video spoiler free. I will inevitably show gameplay to demonstrate some of the topics I'm going to discuss, but I'll do my best to keep those clips from early in the game. For any prospective gamers out there still deciding whether to invest in Elden Ring, I can quickly provide a few recommendations. If you're a fan of previous From Software games, you'll enjoy Elden Ring. If you have a dedicated group of friends who will play at your same pace, and you all have a tremendous amount of patience for the multiplayer, more on that later, you will enjoy Elden Ring. If you have an abundance of free time, not burdened by pesky things like a job, family, or a house, you will enjoy Elden Ring. If you do not qualify for one of these, I can't in good conscience recommend this game. Elden Ring combines all of the best and worst aspects of their previous titles, and it asks you to spend 80 plus hours for a single playthrough, or 30 minutes if you're a speedrunner. One last thing to mention before getting started. Elden Ring is Dark Souls. I've played every From Software game since 2009, the only two I haven't beaten are Demon's Souls and Sekiro. The character controller, AI, progression systems, None of these things have been built from the ground up for Elden Ring. There are certainly additions here, but for the purposes of this review, I am considering Elden Ring to very much be a Dark Souls game. Usually, I wouldn't want to include technical issues in a discussion about the design of a game, but here we are. Elden Ring really makes you feel like you're playing Battlefield 2077. Despite that I played on a new and powerful desktop, I experienced persistent stuttering throughout my entire playthrough, even after lowering my settings. Animations would sometimes freeze or switch to a low frame rate version of itself. My horse and enemies would turn invisible, enabling Elden Ring's true hard mode. I would phase out of the level and die, or a boss would accidentally jump out of the level and teleport back to the center of the arena. Crashes are plentiful, as were cases of the game minimizing itself. Disconnects from multiplayer sessions or just failures to connect in the first place are abundant. For you console gamers out there, I regret to inform you that my experience on PS5 hasn't been much better. To top it off, Elden Ring does not support ultra-wide resolutions, which makes me feel really good about my recent ultra-wide monitor purchase. This is what the game looked like for me. Elden Ring's multiplayer is an ancient relic from 2009 that needs to die. Putting little summon signs on the ground might have been cute when you were younger, but you're all grown up now, FromSoft, it's time to put on your big boy pants. Elden Ring desperately needs proper matchmaking. Elden Ring features a unique system of multiplayer by lottery. There is no estimated wait time, and there is no queue. Some indeterminate period of time passes and your multiplayer signs refresh, and if you happen to be standing on top of a golden sign, you have a chance at being the first person to summon that player. If someone else got to that sign first, no multiplayer for you. It is unclear how many other players might be lying in wait to snatch those golden signs first, or how many players may be placing their golden signs on the ground. To make matters worse, Elden Ring allows not just for one summon, but two meaning that if you happen to strike sevens on your golden ticket and find a friend, you now have to subject that friend to a second lottery. You are disabled from summoning two allies at the same time. No information about your lobby status is communicated to your ally, so he has no way of knowing if you are finding more golden signs, or even if you are currently in the process of summoning a third person. I've had it happen to me on multiple occasions where my second ally leaves my session after having successfully initiated a third summon. Part of the reason the state of multiplayer is so bad that the rewards for assisting other players are terrible. For beating a boss as an ally, you're given a couple of flowers that are scattered around the entire map in abundance, a one-time use miniature buff, and a small pittance of runes that is significantly less than what you would have received if you were the host. If the host is slain, you are removed from the multiplayer session immediately, and you receive nothing for your time. If you received a percentage of runes according to how much damage you dealt to the boss, or if you were allowed to continue fighting the boss on your own, there may have been enough incentive for players to join others, but as it stands, the balance of the player population leans heavily towards hosts. Multiplayer can be frustrating not just for the boss fights, but also for exploration. In Elden Ring, location does not imply intention. One will of grace the Rampart Tower has eight possible directions to go by my count, and there's no way to filter for players who want to go the same way or fight the same enemies. Allies summoned here will often run off and do their own thing.
There are two components of the levels of From Software games I'm going to criticize here. First, let's strip away the set dressing and the textures and consider the layout of dungeons in a white box form. Ever since the first Dark Souls game, people have gone full catnip over circles. A traditional level may be laid out from point A to point B in a straight line, but Dark Souls takes that line and bends it back on itself. The intersection serves as a checkpoint. Fundamentally, this is identical to having a straight line with a second bonfire, but now you're required to climb a ladder or wait for an elevator every time you want to use that checkpoint. Additionally, it dilutes the identity of each individual bonfire because now they serve multiple purposes. In the context of Elden Ring, navigating bonfires in a 3D space is shown on a 2D map, and the position on the bonfire of the map does not correspond to progress. Mind-bogglingly, Many of these circuitous routes in Elden Ring are entirely unnecessary and take you back to the beginning of areas for no apparent reason. Alright, let's go ahead and add the fancy paint gloss back into the world and look at the levels now. When a level designer is constructing a building or a city, it's a real challenge to understand and apply the logic of the world to the layout and architecture of a space. Every game world is full of implicit storytelling, how and why cities have grown or decayed, where roads were fashioned, what materials were used, how structures are laid out. Elden Ring has almost none of this. Structures are built in impossible ways and covered with random balconies, fake windows, stairs that lead to nowhere. Despite the amount of effort that has gone into the background lore of the world, almost none of that effort seems to have gone into actually realizing that world. One other important factor to acknowledge is the exceptional amount of platforming required in this game despite the fact that the only platforming mechanic present is a jump button. Taking a look at these gravestones scattered throughout the world, they do not appear to be carved out of the cliffside or attached in any way that helps tell the story of the world, and navigating them is often more frustrating chore than it is a fun challenge. The primary issues I have with the gameplay of Dark Souls boils down to the design of the character controller and the way that character controller interacts with the AI. As the name implies, a character controller can be described as the bundle of scripts that enable the player to navigate the world and perform certain actions like attacking and jumping. I believe the function of a good character controller is to facilitate the translation of a player's thoughts into a character's actions. In the same way you don't have to think about how you move your legs in order to walk, you shouldn't have to think about what buttons to push in what order once you become adept at manipulating a character controller. One of the oldest running issues with the Dark Souls character controller is the attack patterns. It happens frequently that you will swing your weapon into walls, or over short enemies, or under flying enemies, in a way that no human with a brain would ever do. Enemies are frequently best fought by running around them counterclockwise. But in truth, the best strategy is almost always to run past the trash mobs because the AI can't catch you. There's actually a number of hidden features in the character controller in regards to combat, all of which serve to add more frustrating layers of distance between the player's thoughts and the character's actions. I'll call one of them out as AAR for Automatic Attack Rotation. Attacks in Dark Souls take a long time. If you always attacked in the direction that you initiated the attack, you would miss every time. To accommodate for this, the game automatically rotates a character at an indeterminate time towards the end of an attack animation, an indeterminate number of degrees towards their target. In theory, AAR is a good thing because it helps a character controller behave more naturally to how a real human would adjust their aim at a moving target. Unfortunately, the unpredictable nature of Dark Souls AAR, coupled with the AI's unpredictable threat system and ability to sometimes change targets mid-combo, means that winning boss fights often comes down to luck, practically speaking. The most frustrating and painful component of the character controller is the impenetrable action queue. When your character is in the middle of certain actions, certain button presses are stored and remembered for certain periods of time. If it sounds like I'm saying certain a lot, it's because there's no simple way to understand or describe how and why the action queue behaves like it does. The cliff notes for the action queue is that sometimes your button presses will be remembered and played back for far too long after your initial input, and most of the time that happens, you're dead. I want to give a dishonorable mention to the newest character controller in Elden Ring, the horse. The momentum of the horse when turning and jumping hurts my very soul, but my main problem with the horse is collecting items on horseback. 
items are commonly difficult to spot through bushes and past trees, and you'll miss many free items if you don't spam the Y button. If having to spam the Y button constantly isn't annoying already, attempting to attack in near proximity to picking up an item will switch your weapon to your offhand. Just a heads up, trying to fight enemies on horseback with a shield is a bad idea. I also want to give a shout out to the lock-on system here. It frequently fails to select the correct target or any target at all, and when it does fail to select a target, it jarringly snaps your camera back to center. The fact that pillars can break line of sight on enemies is a particularly frustrating feature, especially for one of the bosses later in the game. I want to talk about mazes. Most people probably wouldn't think about mazes as a beacon for progression design in video games, but the comparison is maybe more apt than you think. Progression design through a level is usually based on reducing the amount of replaying content as much as possible while still preserving a coherent experience. Checkpoints mean you don't have to replay the entire level or the entire game when you make a mistake, and this way, mazes have perfect progression. Whenever you discover you reach a dead end, you can immediately go back to a branch and take a different path. You don't have to retread any previous ground, and you don't even have to follow a path all the way to the dead end once you've discovered your mistake. No time is wasted. On the other end of the spectrum, Dark Souls pads its runtime under the guise of high difficulty. Learning a new enemy's attack patterns usually means being hit by them, and being hit by attacks in Dark Souls usually means dying. In this way, every boss fight in Dark Souls can be seen as a maze that sends you all the way back to the start each time you find a dead end. This can be especially tedious for any boss with multiple phases, as every new phase is a new set of dead ends for you to discover. It doesn't make the game any more difficult to execute the winning strategy, mind you. It just means it will take you longer to deduce what the winning strategy is. Difficulty in a video game typically describes the precision and consistency required to overcome challenges, but this fake difficulty is just designed to waste your time. I also want to talk about the mechanical progression of Elden Ring, specifically grinding. In classic linear RPGs a la Final Fantasy, there would be a single boss for you to fight, and a dungeon or field where you could exchange your time grinding to make the next boss fight a little bit easier. It is typically clear which enemies you're supposed to be fighting, and how strong you are relative to your overall progression in the story. However, Elden Ring shotguns strong and weak enemies alike throughout the entire game. There is no clear indication as to who you're supposed to fight or when. Elden Ring does something I've never seen in a video game before, and that it actively tutorializes you wrong. You are taught to follow the Light of Grace from the bonfires, which leads you north from the beginning of the game, when in reality you're supposed to start by traveling south, because the enemies there are weaker. To make matters worse, the game obscures your success not just by level, but by systems. It can be difficult to determine whether the amount of damage you deal or take is driven by your overall level, or by the type of damage being dealt, or by the power level of the skill or weapon being used. When you struggle at defeating a boss, there is little to no feedback to help you figure out what is going wrong. This frequently resulted in my grinding to defeat a difficult boss, only to later realize there were lower level places I probably should have gone to first. I very rarely felt like I was where I was supposed to be. As an added layer of obscurity, From Software is making significant balance changes to the game, meaning that you now won't know why a skill might be performing poorly, unless if you dig through all of the patch notes to understand that skill's history. Lastly, but certainly not leastly, I want to talk about the UI. Elden Ring's map is rough. Certain sections of the map are just straight up wrong. This road here simply doesn't exist. Maybe there are lore reasons for this, but these inaccuracies just make navigation more frustrating. The aim assist for selecting fast travel points is ineffective, and often has you creating map markers on top of the fast travel points. The icing on the cape is in the second zone, Lernia of the Lakes. Maps are acquired at Stells. Steels? Stells? Steely. I don't know. Which is not explicitly explained, and maybe not something you've realized by the time you reach this bonfire. Additionally, the map item is on the opposite side of the steely from the direction you approach it from, meaning that you won't see it. Once you've discovered this fast travel point, the steely icon on the map is now forever covered up. This might not seem like the biggest deal, it's just one map after all, but 
I would argue this is the most important map in the entire game. In order to access the primary dungeon of this area and the second main boss of the game, you need a key. The way you find that key is by cross-referencing an item with the map. The item depicts three islands off the coast of a castle, and that castle is depicted by an icon that is only made visible after acquiring the map. The castle icon depicts the castle from the north face, meaning that you won't recognize the castle from the icon unless if you travel past it and look back at it. What this meant for me is that I spent an inordinate amount of time scouring the entire coastline of the game, traveling to regions far beyond my level range, rotating the item's island depiction to see where it might correspond to, never realizing that the islands weren't actually islands at all, and they were just three little hills in the middle of Lernia Lake Basin. The other major blunder of the UI is in the inventory system. I can't possibly imagine why there isn't a tab for recently acquired items. In the second half of my playthrough of the game, the inventory system became entirely impossible to use, and I had to end up using the wiki to figure out what items were and what they did. Part of that is because of the sheer number of items in the game, but part of it is the very intentionally illogical item categories. You might find a dagger that isn't actually a dagger, or a seal that isn't actually a seal, or something that sounds like a key item, but it's actually a consumable. There are a tremendous number of other small, obnoxious interactions. Pop-up dialogues can force your shield down, even if you continue to hold the block button after the pop-up is gone. You can't talk to NPCs while on horseback. You can't summon allies while in the middle of another action, and the summon button is the same as the jump button meaning that you'll jump on top of someone's summon sign, and the extra time spent jumping practically guarantees that someone else will have already summoned that player. I suspect I'm not going to make a lot of friends with this video. Elden Ring appears to be wildly popular, and certainly there is fun to be had in the game. Unfortunately, due to the issues I've just described, and many more that I haven't, most of my time spent in this game was very frustrating and unsatisfying. I've played the From Software games because I enjoy a lot of what the systems offer, and I like to challenge myself, both in terms of difficulty and exposing myself to games that aren't my favorite so that I can learn from them. This video was a way for me to excise my decade-old demons on Dark Souls games, and hopefully it's been of some interest to you as well. If so, slap the like button and the subscribe button and join my Discord server, link in the description. Your support will help me to make games that will be way better than Elden Ring, and I'd love for you to be a part of my game development journey. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.